Bird disease is also called as whooping cough because th this disease is characterized by paroxysms of multiple bouts of cough in a single expiration ending with the characteristic whoop sound. So that's why it is called as whooping cough. If you want to know the must know things about pertussis, please make sure to watch this video till the end. And if you're new to my channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can keep watching all my medical videos for free and that will really be helpful for, for you in your medical college. Bordetella pertussis is the causative bacteria in pertussis and it is a gram-negative coccobacilli. So let us start our discussion by talking about the clinical features first. Initially, there's an incubation period for about 7 to 10 days. So if you're, what, if you're reading about pertussis for the first time, uh, to keep it simple, you just remember that the incubation period is for about a week. Okay. So from exposure to the pathogenic bacteria to the manifestation of disease, the duration is about one week. The patient will be asymptomatic for about a week from the exposure to the pathogenic bacteria. After that one week, the patient will show uh, clinical manifestations. Okay, so the clinical course of pertussis is uh, can be divided into three phases. So the three phases of um, pertussis are catarrhal phase, paroxysmal phase, and convalescent phase. You can remember these by the mnemonic CPC. Okay, so initially the catarrhal phase is the first phase which happens after the incubation period is over. In this catarrhal phase, the patient will show non-specific symptoms like high-grade fever and uh, coryza, conjunctival um, redness and so many other non-specific symptoms. Okay, So you will not be suspecting the patient to be having uh, pertussis in this catarrhal phase. So this will last for about one to two weeks. Okay, So following one week of incubation period, the patient will have catarrhal phase for about one to two, two weeks. So as I've told you, uh, in catarrhal phase, the patient will be having cough and uh, a high grade fever. So the cough in occurring in the first phase, the catarrhal phase, is actually not uh, the whooping cough which I have described earlier. Okay. So in the catarrhal phase or the first phase which hap which is happening in pertussis, the patient will have cough, but uh, that will not be mostly whooping cough. Okay. So the patient is highly infectious during this phase. So if a healthy person comes into contact with these uh, patients during the catarrhal phase. There are high chances that the healthy person may get infection from these patients. Okay, so the patients are highly infectious during the catarrhal phase, and since they're highly infectious, uh, the culture reports may be positive because the bacteria may be found uh, from the swabs which we take. Okay, so the culture report may be positive during the catarrhal phase. So the next phase which happens is the paroxysmal phase. So in this phase, the patients will have specific symptoms for specific symptoms of pertussis disease, okay? So the whooping cough, which is the characteristic of pertussis, is seen in the paroxysmal phase. And there are, uh, in some cases, the patient may develop post tussive vomiting after the repeated bouts of coughing. So the whooping cough is characterized by multiple bouts of uh, cough in a single expiration ending with a characteristic whoop sound. So the, the interesting thing is that the multiple bouts of cough which act, occur in pertussis happens in a single expiration, okay, mostly. So the child uh, takes uh, an inspiration and then it uh, does expiration. In a single expiration, it does multiple bouts of cough and that will wash out almost all the air inside the lungs, okay. So the lung is almost washed out of the entire air which is available inside the lungs. And uh, during the expiration, uh, at the end of the all the whoops, uh, at the end of all the coughs which occur, what will happen is that uh, the child will have to forcefully take in air to overcome the washed out air. Okay, So the lung is empty after the repeated bouts of cough. So the child will forcefully inspire and that will happen against the closed glottis. The glottis will be closed uh, initially. So before, uh, before the opening of the glottis itself, the child will start to forcefully inspire and that will produce the characteristic whoop sound. So that is the basis for whooping cough. During the paroxysmal phase, the patient is non-infectious, so the culture may also be negative during this phase. So it is easy to remember the first phase, the catarrhal phase, uh, the patient will be infectious and the culture may be positive, whereas the second phase, the paroxysmal phase, the patient is non-infectious and the culture may be negative. In the first phase, which is the catarrhal phase, 
uh, the patient will show non-specific symptoms and there will be no woofing cough during that phase. Uh, mostly, uh, mostly there will be no woofing cough during that phase. In the second phase, the paroxysmal phase, the patient will show specific symptoms and uh, the woofing cough, uh, the typical thing of uh, pertussis disease is seen during the paroxysmal phase. The last phase is the convalescent phase. So during this phase, the patient's condition improves and the coughing uh, decreases. Okay and antibodies start to appear in the serum so that is a sign of uh, the body's immune system taking over and those are the clinical course of pertussis disease and now let's talk about some complications of pertussis there are some pressure effects okay so uh, since the child is exerting so much during the repeated bouts of cough what can happen is that uh, there can be manifestations like uh, uh, conjunctival bleeding as like subconjunctival hemorrhage and uh, the chances of uh, intracranial bleeds which are quite rare but subconjunctival hemorrhage can be seen quite often and petechiae can be seen on the skin and the child can develop uh, secondary uh, pneumonia and there can be certain neurological complications so this is a picture showing subconjunctival hemorrhage which can uh, occur because of the pressure effects of uh, attributed to repeated bouts of coughing okay so let's talk about the transmission of pertussis. It is transmitted by droplets infection. So a, a, a person infected with pertussis is the source of infection. Infants are commonly affected by pertussis. And uh, the source of infection is the patients infected with pertussis and particularly in the catarrhal, the catarrhal stage as I already described in, the, in this video. Uh, you must be remembering that the catarrhal phase is the phase in which the patient is highly infectious and the patient will be showing non-specific symptoms and uh, I've told you to uh, remember it this way so since the patient is highly infectious the culture may be positive during this phase the virulence factors you must be uh, familiar with the list of the virulence factors responsible for ca causing pertussis disease and these are tracheal cytotoxin pertussis toxin, adenylate, adenylate cyclase toxin, dermonecrotic toxin, endotoxin, and there are certain other sins. So how do you diagnose uh, pertussis? The specimen should be uh, taken from the nasopharynx and uh, the nasopharyngeal secretions are taken with the help of swabs like alginate swab or dacron swab. And you can perform culture in special media like rigor and low wave medium because but uh, bordetella pertussis is a fastidious bacteria it requires special culture media so you can you must remember this name of a special culture media for bordetella pertussis which is called as rigor and low wave medium and the typical appearance uh, you see in the rigor and low wave medium by bordetella pertussis is mercury drops appearance as you can see in this picture you must you must remember this characteristic appearance so the culture becomes negative after the catarrhal phase so you must be remembering the second phase which is the paroxysmal phase in which the patient is not infectious so you you, you can remember it this way since the patient is non-infectious the culture may become negative and uh, in the second phase uh, in this phase the paroxysmal phase the patient will show specific symptoms like the woofing cough which you see in border data pertussis so you can perform a culture smear and then you perform you can perform microscopy and uh, you can see the gram negative coccobacilli which are body pertussis and the typical appearance you see in culture smear, culture smear microscopy is called as thumbprint sign you can see the bacteria um, being colonized together and which resembles a thumbprint being kept on a paper okay so there are two signs you must remember on the culture media you saw mercury uh, beach sign and here uh, in the culture smear you are seeing thumbprint sign so th these are the two important signs uh, you must um, remember in case of body pertussis so you can also detect serum antibodies which are mainly elevated during the convalescent phase which is the third phase and you can do that by enzyme immunoassays uh, tests like ELISA can be done Molecular methods like polymerase chain reaction can be used, which are highly sensitive and specific tests. Uh, so let's talk about the treatment of uh, pertussis. Mostly, it is uh, the most of the manifestations of the disease is because of the toxins of the bacteria per se. 
and you must provide supportive treatment okay so there are um, uh, not much specific treatments available for the toxins of the bacteria so supportive treatment like IV fluids are necessary and uh, antibiotics to control the fever antibiotics like macrolides can be used to prevent carrier state okay so even even after the disease is controlled the person may become a chronic carrier uh, so the bacteria may colonize the nasopharynx of the patient and they may be spreading the infection in the community so a course of antibiotics like macrolides can help to eradicate the bacteria from the patient so that uh, uh, transmission to the people in the community can be prevented prophylaxis you all must be knowing uh, the vaccines which are available against pertussis uh, so the vaccines the whole cell pertussis vaccine is available in combination as um, DPT vaccine which is a combination of uh, diphtheria pertussis and tetanus vaccine so and we also have a cellular pertussis vaccine so the, you must remember the names of the vaccines available there are two, two main vaccines whole cell pertussis vaccine and a cellular pertussis vaccine and you must also remember that pertussis is available in combination with uh, diphtheria and tetanus uh, vaccines okay so it is available as dpt vaccine so if you learned something new today please make sure to hit the like button and share this video to your friends so that it will be helpful for them and you can support my channel uh, by donating on www.patreon.com slash simple so that i can keep making more videos for you guys and new merch is gonna be um, made available in our merch store so please keep checking checking this uh, website which is mentioned over here and that's it for today i hope you guys learned something new today if you did please like share and subscribe and click the thumbs up sign and on the screen um, to go to the to go to my patreon page to donate and uh, follow me on instagram at medwits made simple one you can also watch my other microbiology videos by clicking on the rectangle you see here and you can watch my other videos by clicking on the rectangle which you see here thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video